Good day guys, uh, this is physics for foundation students and we're going to cover units and measurements. There are six basic quantities in physics and that's length, time, mass, temperature, electric current and the luminous intensity. And the SI units or the base SI units are shown. Immediately you'll notice that there are several rules that you need to follow when you write units. For starters, when a unit is written in full, it must always start with a small letter. Therefore, you say Ampere with a small letter, not a capital A, even though it is named after a person. When symbols are used and the unit is named after a scientist, the first letter of that symbol must be a capital letter. And that's why capital A, because there was a scientist by the name of Ampere. Thirdly, you either have to write the unit in full or use the correct symbol. You don't use any abbreviation. You cannot say 2 amps. We have to say 2 amperes or 2A when we write units. When symbols are used, you cannot add S after the symbol to show the plural form. It always just becomes A, 20A or 20 amperes. 50N for 50 Newtons. We don't say 50NS or 20AS. Now, let us derive a unit of pressure from the basic SI units. We know that pressure is given as force over area, and we can further break down force into its defining equation as force being equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration and we can also write area as the length times length or length squared therefore substituting those two in the pressure equation we get P equal to mass times acceleration divided by length times length now everything in this equation is in base units or base quantities except acceleration so let's write acceleration as velocity over time. We can further express velocity as length over time. And therefore, this expression of pressure can then be written as mass times length over time divided by time, everything divided by length squared. Now we can put in the associated base SI units. For mass, we use kg. For length, we use meters. And then time is s to the power minus 2. And this can be expressed as kg per meter per square second, which is also known as Pascal's. There are various methods you can use to convert from one unit to the other. Uh, but the most common one is called the cross multiplication, where you use the conversion fraction that's given, and then um, you arrange or the same units to be on one side, uh, and by multiple denominator of one fraction with the numerator of the other. In this case, 15 miles will give you 24.15 kilometers. Because some basic SI units may not be convenient in size for a given measurement, we have to use alternative methods. For argument's sake, long distances are usually expressed in kilometers rather than in microns or micrometers or nanometers and so forth. Uh, you can't actually express the distance from Cape Town to Cairo in millimeters. That won't be convenient. Therefore, we have to introduce what we refer to as multiples and subdivisions of SI units. First, we look at the scientific notation or the scientific way of writing very large numbers or very, very small numbers. In the scientific notation, you've got to move the decimal point to the first non-zero digit. And when you move to the right, the power of 10 becomes negative, And then when you move to the left, it becomes positive. 
in example 1, we've got 0 0.035, which we've got to write in its scientific notation. Therefore, we move the decimal point to between 3 and 5, and in doing so, we take 3 leaps to the right, hence the power of 10 becomes minus 3. In 1.2, 56765.32, we've got to move the decimal to the first non-zero digit, which is 5, and we take four leaps or four steps as shown. And since we are moving to the left, the power of 10 becomes positive. In example 2, we've got to change the numbers that are written in scientific notation to a general form where there's no uh, exponents. And to do this, we note that the exponent is 4 in the first example. Therefore, we've got to move to the right 4 times so that we can get 4 minus 4, cancelling out 10 to the power 0 is 1. And then the number that results is just 54646. Six. In the second example, we've got 5.304 times 10 to the power minus 3. Minus 3 simply says that the comma has been moved to the right three times. Therefore, all we need to do is to reverse it three times to the left so that we get a positive 3 cancelling down the negative 3. And we will then get 0 0.05304. Here are some more examples for you to try. Number two, that comma is not a decimal. The general form will just be 2523, which is basically equal to 2.523 times 10 to the power positive 3. For exercise 3, we have to move the comma three times to the left the positive side, therefore we will get 425445 times 10 to the power positive 3. Next we look at the engineering notation which basically works with exponents of 10 that are multiples of 3. So all these should be the multiples of 3, and there are a few exceptions. We've got there a centi, and we also have deca, which comes 10 to the power 1. Exercise 3 will be 8 times 10 to the power minus 3. Mili is minus 3. Exercise 4 will be 10 times 10 to the power minus 6, because micro is times 10 to the power minus 6. Now let's look at significant figures and how accuracy can be established from the number of significant figures in a given number. Okay, firstly, all non-zero numerals or numbers are significant. Now, for argument's sake, in this example here, 1, 1, 2.6, there are four non-zero numerals. And in the other examples, A, B, C, D, at the bottom there, we've got 1, 2. So here we can also say we've got 2. Here we also have 1. There we've got 1. There we also have 1. These are the non-zero numerals, which automatically becomes significant. We then look at the zeros. And with zeros, there are two conditions. Firstly, all zeros that are between non-zero numbers are significant. And lastly, we look at zeros that are following a non-zero numeral and are continuing to the right of the decimal point. So there must be a decimal point. We look at number A and there's none in there. We look at number B. There's only one zero that's following a non-zero that is on the right of the decimal point. In C, there's three of those, and the 
as nan in D. B will have two significant figures, one plus one. C will have four significant figures, one non-zero and three zeros. And there's only one significant figure in the last one. Till we meet in the tutorials. God bless.